Grade 5, Module 1, Lesson 2, Exit Ticket 2. Today we are going to be looking at multiplying and dividing decimals by 10, 100, or 1,000. It's important to keep in mind what we learned in the previous lesson as far as our place value chart is concerned and the value of the digits. It's important to remember that the digits are the same, but their values will change, so that makes their position in the number different. Let's take a look at letter A. 32 and 1 tenth times 10. If we circle the 10, we notice that there's only one zero in the number 10. That's going to come in handy when we need to change the value of each number. In your head, you need to visualize what 32 and 1 tenth looks like on a place value chart. For this example, I will draw the chart to make sure what you're visualizing is correct. If we were to think about 32 and 1 tenth on a place value chart, it would look like this. 3 is in the tens place. We have 2 in the ones place. We have our decimal. Then we have our 1 that's in the tenths place. Now just like we did in lesson 1, we're going to isolate each digit and multiply it by 10 to see how the value is changing and where it moves in the number. If we look at the 3 that's in the tens place, that's 30 times 10, which is 300, which means our 3 will move to the hundreds place. Next, we have our 2, which is in the ones place. 2 times 10 is 20, which means our 2 will move to our tens place. Our decimal stays the same. I bring it right down. Then I need to do our last number, which is 1 tenth times 10, which equals 1. So now our 1 is in the 1's place for a final answer of 321. As you can see, in 10, there's only one zero. In our number, our decimal place only moved one spot to the right, which made my number bigger. That's a great check to make sure that you have correctly changed the value of each digit. For letter B, I want you to visualize the place value chart in your head and isolate each number. For letter B, we have 3,632 and 1 tenth divided by 10. When we divide, we know our number is getting smaller. As we learned in the previous lesson, when we divide, the numbers on our place value chart move to the right and the value changes by becoming 10 times smaller. You need to isolate each number. So we have the 3, which is in the thousands place. 3,000 divided by 10 would give us 300. And I might just put a little H above my 3 since I'm visualizing the chart in my head as a reminder. My next digit is 600 divided by 10 would give me 60, which would put my 6 in the tens place. Next, I have 3, which is in the tens place. So 30 divided by 10 would give me 3 in the ones place. Even though I have more numbers to divide, once I hit the ones place, I know that my decimal needs to appear. Then I continue. Two is in the ones place. Two divided by 10 would give me two tenths. And my last digit is one, which was in the tenths place. Divided by 10 would give me one hundredths for an answer of 363 and 21 hundredths. As a check, I know that in 10 there is only one zero and my decimal moved to the left one spot. Therefore, we did it. 
Now let's take a look at 2a and 2b. You may notice that there isn't a decimal in either of those numbers, but a good mathematician knows the decimal is always to the right of the last digit in the number. Let's take a look at 2a. 455 times 1,000. If we envision 455 in a place value chart, the 4 is in the hundreds place, the 5 is in the tens place, and the second 5 is in the ones place. We're going to use the same method as we did before, knowing that our decimal is to the right of the last 5 in our number. Since we're multiplying by 1,000, this number is going to get 1,000 times greater. We can isolate each number and multiply. 400 times 1,000 means our 4 is now going from the hundreds place to the hundred thousand place. And I could put an HT to symbolize that that's hundred thousands. Our first five is currently in the tens place, but when we multiply that by a thousand, 50 times 1,000 gives us 50 thousands, so now our five is in the ten thousands place. Our last five is in the ones place. Five times 1,000 would give us 5,000, which means our last five is now in the thousands place. The thing is, we still need to do some work because our answer isn't 455. It's 455 thousands. So what we need to do is add zeros to complete the other place values. I'll put my comma right here. I'll add a zero, another zero, and a third zero. So now I have my place values completed. I have my hundreds, my tens, and my ones, which means I have now made this number 1,000 times bigger. Our last problem is 455 divided by 1,000. We're going to use the same strategy, but this time we need to remember we're making the number smaller. If we look at the first number, we have 4. The 4 is in the hundreds place, which means we're going to isolate the 4, and it's going to be 400 divided by 1,000, which gives us 4 tenths. Since it's 4 tenths, we must add our decimal, and then place our four in the tens place. We then have our first five, which is in the tens place. 50 divided by 1,000 is five hundredths. We place our five in the hundredths place. Our last five is in the ones place. Five divided by 1,000 is five thousands, which gives us an answer of 455 thousands. To check your answer, you look at the thousand. There are three zeros in 1,000. We know that our decimal comes at the end of our whole number, and we see that since there's three zeros in 1,000, our decimal should have moved three places to the left since we were dividing. 1, 2, 3, which should give us 455 thousandths. We were successful. Great job.